Hey, this is Lee Waller. Welcome to this tutorial in After Effects. Today I'm going to take a look at a couple of effects that uses audio to generate visual effects. I've created this graphic that you're seeing right now using this audio that I pre-recorded, then brought into After Effects and used these two effects, Audio Spectrum and Audio Waveform. Let's jump in and take a look at how we can create these effects. I'm going to take a look at four examples. After Effects comes with two effects that uses audio to generate graphics. That's the audio waveform and then also audio spectrum. Here's one that I've created with audio waveform. And here's another with the audio spectrum. And then also I'll take a look at audio meters, how to create these. All right, so I'm gonna jump in and start with the audio waveform. I'm gonna start a new composition. And you're definitely gonna need some audio. I am just using this bed of music that I got from purpleplanet.com. I'm gonna drop that into the composition. And now I'm gonna add a new solid and I'm going to add the audio waveform to that. You can find that in effects under generate so you can either go to effect generate audio waveform or you can search that over here in your effects and presets tab. So apply that to the solid and first thing you'll need to do in the effect you're going to need to choose your audio layer. So I'm going to come here to audio layer and choose that sunbeam.wave and we can start playing and let it render out. So with the default settings of the effect, this is what you get. So we're going to do a little work on this. The start and end point, of course, will be the start and end point of the graph. The number of displayed samples, you can increase or decrease and we are going to increase that. You can see there, let me find a spot. Here we go will increase. So this gives us more points of information. I'm going to go ahead and inc increase this up to 960. The maximum height is the height that the wave will be created. I'm going to increase that up to 500. And this duration here is in milliseconds. I'm going to increase that up to 2000. And I'll offset this in just a minute, but we're going to take a look at um, a way of finding that point that we want to use there. The thickness is the thickness of the line. And for right now, I'm going to bump that up just a little bit up to four. And I'm going to drop this softness down to zero. I'm going to leave the random seed as it is. And uh, you can change these colors to whatever you want. The option here for waveform will be, do you want a mono signal? which would be the two channels mixed together, or do you want the left or the right side? I'm just gonna leave it on mono right now. And then it gives you an option of analog lines, digital lines, or the analog dots. So uh, you can see a little bit of difference there between the digital and the analog. And then the dots, uh, we'll take a look at in just a moment. So for this one right now, I'm gonna leave it on digital. Jump back here and hit play. So the point of creation right now is in the middle. So that's where when you're hearing the music, that's where the waveform is being created. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push this back so that it's being created right here at the end point. To do that, I'm going to I'm going to jump to the beginning of the composition and I'm going to open up the audio layer real quick. Open up the audio, go down into the waveform, and here's the waveform for this. And going to zoom in just a little bit, page up right there. Let's see. To the beginning of the audio itself. And then I'm going to come into the audio offset and I'm going to drag that to the left. And it looks like right now it's going to be a negative 1000. And now as we hear the music, it will be created right there at the beginning of this line. So All 
All right. So there is your audio waveform, and you can jump in there and play with those settings and get all kinds of different looks. The next thing that I'm going to take a look at is the audio spectrum. So I'm going to start a new composition. Hit OK on that. We're going to need the audio in the composition, so drop that in there. And just like before, we'll start off with a solid. And we're going to add in the audio spectrum. I'm going to bring that down, drop it on that solid. And very similar to the audio waveform, we're going to check that music bed right there. And let's play this and see what we've got. This is very similar to the audio waveform. And we're going to make a few adjustments to this. It has a start frequency and an end frequency. And if you're familiar with audio, the ear hears a frequency range of 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. So the frequency range here is starting at 20 hertz and going up to just 2,000 hertz. That's where most music is going to be playing back in that range. For the example I had earlier, I am going to increase this end frequency just up to 2,100. And the number of bands here is 64. We're going to increase that. I'm going to jump that up to 240. The maximum height determines visually how high the peaks of the spectrum will be. How high do we want that going up? All right, so I'm going to use that spot right there, and I'm going to increase this maximum height a bit. Maybe up to 2,000. And let's see how that works. All right. And again, you can choose from digital or analog lines. And you can also select dots. So I'm going to go back to the digital. One other thing that this has, um, this hue interpolation here, I'm going to increase that to one full rotation. And you get a pretty interesting look in the spectrum that's being created. And you can also, again, choose from whether you want a left side, a right side, or mono there. Another pretty cool uh, option that you can click on this is the duration averaging. Just smooths that out. Looks pretty cool. So you can play around with these and see what different types of spectrums you can create. I want to take a look at one more option in the audio spectrum. Let's take a look at this example. So just keep in mind that that is the same audio spectrum that I used right here. But there's another option in it, which is the Use Polar Path, that in this example on both of these, I have selected. Basically what it does is it takes that audio spectrum line and wraps it around the circle. That's a simple option right there with, with this Use Polar Path. You just select it. I found, though, that in the original setup of this, the start frequency and end frequency was mainly focused on the lower end and was not pushing the higher or the mid of the music that much. So what I did is, on this example, I have two solids both set up the same except for a few minor adjustments on the start and end frequency and then also on the maximum height. So let's take a look at that. This top solid is what I consider more of my high end of the music, uh, where you hear the voices and some of the keyboard, that sort of thing. Then down here is the lower end, the kick drum, uh, the bass parts of the music. I'm going to turn the high end off for right now, and let's just take a look at the low end and what it's... So you can see that most of the visual is being generated to the left. And when the rest of the music comes in, we don't get much to the right side of it. So that's why I chose to make one that would focus on just those low ends and then one that would focus on the high ends. So when I add that high end back in,
it makes it just a little bit more interesting visual. So to do that, I created one originally and then made a few adjustments. So on the low end, I kept the start frequency at 20 and the end frequency at 800. So I shrank that frequency range down a good bit to have it focused more on that low end. I didn't need to push the maximum height up much, just to 2000. Then I duplicated that so that all of my other settings were the same. And with that one, I set the start frequency at 1000 and kept the end frequency at 2000. But I increased the maximum height up to 10,000 because we're just not getting a lot of movement in this frequency range here. So by adding both of these solids in with that audio spectrum at different frequency ranges, it makes for a more interesting look. All right, the last thing that I'm gonna take a look at is audio meters. I'm going to start a new composition. And I will need that audio in there. So bring the audio down into the timeline. So with that audio in there, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to keyframe assistant. Hidden in there is convert audio to keyframes. So After Effects goes in there and creates a new layer based on that audio with keyframes. So I've selected that audio amplitude layer that was created. And you can see there that we have a left channel, a right channel, and then a both channels. It has created all of these different keyframes and converted it to a slider. We're gonna use that information to create the audio meters. So be to begin to create our audio meters, I'm going to go up to layer, new, and I'm gonna add in a shape layer. I'm going to grab the pen tool and all I'm going to do is draw a straight line from the bottom to the top. So I'm going to open up my information tab and using these X and Y uh, coordinates here, I'm going to kind of zoom in on where I want this to be. So I'm going to drop down to about 900 by 960, set a point there, and then I'm going to jump up to about 180 by 960. And I can hold down the shift key once I get that uh, 180 in there. And that shift key will make sure that I create a straight line right there. So there is my first audio meter. I'm going to let that be the left side. So I've created that shape layer. And we'll take a look at the contents of that shape one right there. And it's basically a stroke with a 20 pixel width on it. So with shape one selected, I'm going to add, come right here to add, and I'm going to add a modifier to this. I'm going to add trim paths. And that trim paths has a start and an end position. You can see there I'm adjusting those. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach the left side information from this audio amplitude to the end position here. And that will generate our audio meter. To do that, I'm going to come to the end property for that trim paths on shape one. And I'm going to hold down the alt key and click the stopwatch to set a keyframe there. And what it does is it opens up our expression options. Now I'm going to take this pick whip and I need to set this up real quick. I need to open up the audio amplitude and make sure that I can find the left channel slider right there. I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to grab this pick whip right here. And I'm going to drag it down to the left channel slider. And once it's highlighted, drop it on there. You can see now it has written the expression for us. And so the height of this line is going to be determined by that left side. So we'll come back in here and... So one thing that I've done to adjust this is I've gone in here and... Uh, we're not getting a lot of response out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this value. So I'm going to hit times 1.7. And what that's going to do is take the value from this left slider, whatever this keyframe is, and it's going to multiply it by 1.7 so that we get a little more response out of it.
All right, we have a lot of the work done. I'll label this, and I'm going to duplicate it. Select it, Control D or Command D, and label that. And we'll do the same thing for it. Going to open up the contents and go to Trim Paths, and let's make sure that we have our meters open here. And I'm just going to click on the end, go to that expression right there, grab the pick whip, drag that down till I find the right channel slider right there. And now the right channel slider is taking its information. And let me multiply that by 1.7. But what I need to do is separate these two. That's going to be easy enough. I'll just go here to the left meter and I'm going to hold down the shift key and arrow over once. And then I'll go to the right meter, hold down the shift key and arrow over once. And now we have our two meters separated left and right. And we can take a look at that. Now, of course, on this meter, you can change the color of the stroke. Uh, you can build uh, values for it using the graphics in After Effects. There's so many things that you can do to make this a bit more interesting. But that is the basics of creating that meter. So using the techniques that I just demonstrated, I built this graphic using audio waveform, audio spectrum, and then also the audio meters. I built the rest of the graphics just using shape layers in After Effects. And I'll take a look at that in another tutorial. I hope this has been helpful. For more on After Effects and Adobe Premiere, take a look at my other tutorials.